All right, so we're officially two minutes after the hour. Looks like we don't quite have um, everybody that registered, but they usually uh, trickle in as we get going. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, just get started by welcoming everybody. It's been a, a several month hiatus. So thank you for tuning back in. Um, got a great meeting today. As mentioned, Tim is joining us all the way from the UK, Zen Master, InfoLab, um, talking about some of the new features in the latest release. So it should be really good. And Kathy, who has presented uh, in the past to the Tucson Tug, will be presenting again on some of the integrations she's done with Google Site. So should be really good. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Tucson, that's a little bit what it looks like, saguaro cactuses. Tim, you probably don't have those in the UK, but very familiar uh, setting and surrounding for us here in the desert. And just to sort of encourage some excitement, these are not Tucson people, but it's the broader Tableau database community. And look how much fun they're having. I should say we're having, I'm in that picture somewhere as well. Um, okay, so first 15 minutes, welcome community updates. We do have some updates uh, locally for Tucson. And then there's obviously some exciting things going on in the broader community. I wanna make sure everybody's aware of. Uh, Tim's gonna have about 30 minutes plus five minutes of Q&A to uh, go over his presentation on the 2021.2 new features. Really looking forward to that. And then Kathy, likewise, will have uh, about 30 uh, plus five minutes at the end for Q&A for her presentation. If you do stick around to the end, we are going to give away some gift certificates too, I believe, to the Tableau uh, gift store, um, the e-gift store. So stick around. You'll have a chance to win uh, those gift certificates. First of all, I just want to say thank you. I'm not sure if Nicole or Natalia are on this call, uh, but thank you for your leadership. Both of them are stepping away from helping to really put on the, these Tucson user groups. They've done a great job. Nicole was really um, on the outset of the team, helping to get it started. And Natalie jumped on a little bit later, but was really instrumental in helping to do some of that integration with the university that we did through last year. So. Thanks to both of you. Um, it's been fun collaborating and working with you. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, engaging with any other leaders who are interested in helping to, to lead this tug. So um, just keep that in mind. So the IronViz qualifier announcement is happening soon. So next month, the I believe there's 320 entries this year. Um, and the event to announce the top three finalists will be August 12th. You can uh, click through the image on this slide to get to the RSVP registration link. I'll make sure these slides are posted uh, to our Tableau user group community page, and it'll be hosted by Andy and Keisha. And it'll just be a really exciting time to celebrate three new people who are venturing forward into the, uh, the global qualifier contest or the global, uh, global final contest. Um, so please attend that if you can. It should be a cool time to, to celebrate with the community. This is a cool event. So this is where um, Sports of Viz Sunday community will be taking some Olympic based data. And I believe it's just Simon, but he'll be producing a visualization live based off of Olympic data. So it's an opportunity to see somebody who's very skilled at his craft in Simon Beaumont produce a Viz sort of Iron Viz style uh, quickly in 20 minutes based off of the Olympic data. So um, very appropriate. The Olympics are starting and a cool way for sort of Tableau to, to tie into that. So the link to register for that event is below, should be fun. I'm not going to go in detail here, Tim will uh, discuss that in his presentation, but um, definitely some major inroads with this latest release to the ecosystem in terms of uh, augmented analytics, trying to sort of automate insights for people outside of the data science and data analysis domain. Um, some ways to sort of collect and, um, and combine or, or make easier to find uh, documents and things on the server in terms of collections and some additional, obviously, integrations with Salesforce that Tableau keeps pursuing um, with the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the partnership that was started, I believe, last year or two years ago. So should be a cool presentation and obviously a really cool release um, that happened in June. So our August event is already on the books. So we're partnering with the Atlanta and Raleigh-Durham user group. And it's going to be a presentation where leaders from those communities are going over their biggest fails in 
data and how they recovered from those failures. So if you're looking to, to just get into a meeting where you'll see some vulnerability uh, from these leaders, um, some just stories of, of how uh, challenges were encountered and mistakes were made, but then overcome, that should be a cool event. So kind of a unique event, not your traditional tug, but something worth uh, watching. As always, get involved. So, so many opportunities to, to practice uh, visualization, whether it's in IronQuest, Project Health Viz, Workout Wednesday, so many different opportunities. If you're new to the community, pick one and go for it. All right, so that was a very quick sort of uh, update on what's going on in the community. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Tim. So Tim is from the UK, the Information Lab. He's a Tableau Zen master. He's worked in the past, I believe at Accenture. Uh, he has a YouTube channel where he puts forth these tutorials uh, of how to use Tableau, how to, how to take advantage of certain capabilities and functionalities. And he has over 16,000 subscribers on that channel. So obviously very good at what he does. I uh, had a chance to view one of his presentations at the Athens Tug uh, last month, and it was excellent, uh, so much so that I asked him to come to Tucson. So with that, uh, Tim, welcome to Tucson. I'll go ahead and turn over the control to you. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, yeah, thank, thanks for hosting me as well. It's always good to kind of meet a new audience of people. And um, it, I always find each user group has like its, its own dynamic and you get a completely different sort of sense of questions. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what you guys have in store for me. Okay. Um, can everyone see my screen okay? Uh, I see. I am actually not seeing it, Tim. I don't know if anybody else is. Yeah, looks like not yet. It actually looks like your video is frozen as well. Looks like we may, oh, there he is. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay, let's try sharing the screen again. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I shared my screen and I apparently disappeared. Let's try <laughs> one more time. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Oh, no. Yeah. It's happening again. It, it happened. Oh, wait. No, I, I got you. You're up. You got me. You got me. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I see okay. the slides. We're good. We're good. Excellent. Crazy if that I hope that let's so let's hope this doesn't happen again. But um I won't move whatever I moved because apparently that caused some troubles. But anyway, um thank you for hosting me. Um I wanted to just very briefly cover what's new in 2021.2. Um it's impossible to cover everything in half an hour. So I'm obviously just gonna focusing on some of the most important features, or at least as I see it. Um, but what I wanted to do before that is I always try and share how I come across some of the insight. About these features that I that I come across myself. So um, over here, I, I went through the list of sort of when I start engaging with the product and what's new in Tableau. And it essentially starts with the beta process. Now the beta is super easy to get involved with. Um, it starts essentially from Tableau themselves. They normally sort of call out that the beta is available. Um, you sometimes see a coming soon page also highlights what features are going to be in the release. And that's really the first chance to just start playing with the product and start actually giving feedback about what's happening with these features. And then of course it comes out, there's various product marketing blogs, there's a video and actually over the years, this has really ramped up. We used to never get any of this. So there was never a beta process. There was never any blogs. It just came out and it was like a nice surprise. And over time, you know, marketing has really kicked in and they really try and make sure that everyone knows what's going on. So there's a whole range of things, but what I will say is that, none of these present the same information. So <laughs> you would think that, for example, um, when they you know go through the uh, product release page, every single feature is on that page. It's actually not. There's um, a bunch of stuff that is so small that it's not really a headline feature sometimes that it makes it into the help pages for each product. Sometimes uh, you don't really know about something until someone breaks Tableau or finds a hack and then suddenly people have found a new way of doing something. So it's really a mixture of all of these things. And so if you just want to sort of get familiar with Tableau and, you know, just find out what's new very, very quickly, um, these two in the middle are probably the best ones. You know, the official product release page and the summary video by Tableau are really, really good. Of course, I do some on my channel as well. Um, and then 
as you start to use the product, that's when the help pages and some of the other stuff really get involved. And if you want to really dive deep and help Tableau build the product, then um, sort of go back uh, even sooner, go into the beta process, you'll meet devs, you can talk to them, they can even walk you through some of the features ahead of time, and you can start to feed into the product that way as well, which is really sort of useful process. And if I, I actually got this slide from Tableau's video, so I didn't make this slide, it's Tableau's own slide, but it really actually shows you how many features, uh, big and small, are actually in each release. And this is partly because of Tableau scale. You know, go back five years ago, um, there'd probably only be six or seven big features in a release. Obviously, Tableau's grown a bit. It's been acquired. There's a lot more going on. It's got a lot more stakeholders involved. So now each release really does feel like there's a lot there. But depending on what part of Tableau you use, you might not feel like there's really much for you. So it's important to come at this from the perspective of a user, uh, an author, a creator, as Tableau likes to call them, um, or even sometimes as a you know product manager, maybe you're looking after a bunch of analytics tools in the organization, uh, you'll really be paying attention to different things at different times. So that's just something to be aware of. In terms of the highlights, this is what Tableau is mostly talking about. And I think in my opinion, these are these are the sort of the, the big features that really will change the quality of life for you, whether you realize it or not, if that makes sense. So um, over the last year, Tableau has been really pushing to get a lot of the products into the browser. Um, there's a lot more capability for viewers. I'll go through all of this in a second, so I won't dive into this now. Um, explain data, which has been a feature that's been around for a while. Uh, has had a bit of an interface redesign, and then it's also been uh, made available for viewers. So now viewers and explorers are getting a much better deal uh, for their experience, um, whereas before they could really only interact with visitors, and now they can actually start to ask their own questions and even build some of their own uh, answers, if, if that makes sense. Uh, collections, um, this is going to make every sort of uh, server admin who spends a lot of time organizing content a little bit happier. These are really a nice freeform way of organizing content. It's a bit like tags, but a little bit more powerful. Um, then you've got some of the analytical features. Now, in some releases in the past, you just get sort of um, analytical feature after analytical feature. So this release was more focused on sort of quality of life improvements, I'd say, um, rather than sort of brand new analytical features. But the area calculation is something that's uh, pretty new in this release for spatial analysis. And then you have the layout container improvements. It's a small thing, but actually it'll make certain things a lot easier. And then these two at the bottom, I've, I've sort of grayed them out because they're not features per se that you know everyone, even an author, might sort of interact with. But in terms of a server admin, it does make the process of setting things up much easier, especially if you come from the Salesforce world. And if you work in infrastructure, having Tableau Server run in something called a container, which I won't go into, it's like super dry stuff, but um, having it run in something called a container actually makes the life of a server admin in many cases a lot, lot easier. So that will mean things like less downtime and better upgrade schedules because the way Tableau set this up just makes it easier for um, admins to sort of get the product into their usual flow of work. Um, server admins don't just look after Tableau Server sometimes, they look after other software and infrastructure as well. So having it behave like other software is really, really important. Okay. And um, just before I sort of dive into that, uh, this is this is sort of just a generic uh, question. I'm not going to answer this, by the way, like this is sort of me posing some questions to you. And I actually think it's an important thing to think about um, when you see each release, because um, sometimes you can get caught in the euphoria of new features. And um, it's very easy to forget those features, actually, unless you use them every single day. And so you have to sort of step back and get a cumulative sense for, is this product really delivering what I want it to do? And when you step back, you actually start to see some signals, right? You start to see some signals from Tableau from places like Conference. Obviously, there's um, you know bigger players in this now, Salesforce having acquired Tableau. There's obviously going to be a big influence on the direction. We've started seeing that in earnest this year. I think next year we'll see it really ramp up as well. And then um, what does the history of the way Tableau release features tell us about future features? Okay. And with that one, it's actually a really interesting one. Whenever Tableau release a new feature, they're never done. They actually sort of incrementally add to each of these features, a bit like an incremental uh, refresh, essentially. Um, you get the first sort of release. And then over time, they slowly add features to it as the community starts to use it, as they start to get feedback. And this has started to happen a lot more. Back in the day uh, when Tableau released features, for example, when maps came to Tableau, that was just 
boom, one whole big new aspect of Tableau. But now it's really hard for things to just suddenly appear. And so what that means is you can actually look at the product today and see signals of what's coming tomorrow. And I'll try and sort of highlight some of this to you um, as I go through the demo today. And then the last thing to think about is what perspective does Tableau sort of wear when they're building products? How do they see their customers? How do they, uh, you know, UX and product uh, managers look at the product and how do they perceive the people who use it? And although this is not necessarily the language that Tableau uses internally, uh, the Tableau blueprint is actually a really good way to sort of understand how Tableau is developing its product um, because they changed to a subscription model just a few years ago and they created three licenses, creator, explorer, and viewer. And those really sort of summarize the three key interactions with Tableau as a product. Um, and what they did is they also came up with something called the blueprint. And the blueprint sort of tracks and maps activities around Tableau um, or analytics products in general um, in a specific way. And actually what started to happen is you can really start to see Tableau developing sort of features in each of these sort of intersections. So not so much on these paths, but for example, deployment, I talked about um, Tableau in a container. That is a feature for people who manage deployments. Um, monitoring and maintenance tools have been coming out over the last few years. When we talk about education, measurement and analytics best practice, you've actually seen lots of quality of life features come in that just allow you know managers to curate their content better or monitor what's going on. Things like the data catalog are starting to really feed other parts of the product and inform people uh, on things like metadata that's really useful. Okay. And then lastly, you know, sharing content. We've, we've just had collections released and we've got this um, concept of the explore page, uh, recent recommendations. And so this is sort of the unspoken underpinning of how Tableau is thinking about its features. So if it's really hard to find a feature that doesn't fall on one of these sections. In fact, I, I can't remember when I wasn't able to place a feature very clearly on one of these points. And so if you think about where Tableau is going, we can't predict the future, but you could definitely guarantee that the feature they release will land somewhere on this sort of matrix. And um, there's lots more on the Tableau preprint. Go check it out. It's actually a really useful guide for deploying Tableau. So definitely check it out. Okay, so I just wanted to give that very brief insight because when I see a new release, um, I I actually step back and I look at it from this perspective perspective, and I try and see sort of what's coming. Um, it's also why I don't <laughs> share hacks as often because uh, I tend to get the impression that Tableau is not done when a feature comes out. So it probably takes maybe two to three years for a feature to be mature before you can really start hacking around with it because generally Tableau will, will add the stuff that we want to do to the feature over that period of time. Okay. So uh, enough talking, let me just go straight into some demos. Um, so just as a, as a reminder, I'm gonna sort of um, capitalize on, on these points here. I'm gonna use the browser entirely as much as I possibly can, but if, in case I have bugs with the internet, which has already happened, I will of course uh, jump to desktop. So I have got a, a desktop uh, version here. This is running on 2021.2, 20, uh, but I'm gonna try and avoid using that as much as I possibly can. And I'm just going to be using something called Tableau Online and I'm gonna be using desktop and authoring in the browser from that place, okay? So let me jump into, um, let me jump into uh, my online instance here. So this is just like a test instance. You get this if you're part of the beta process. So if you want to sort of help out Tableau, develop new features, you can go ahead and do that. And when you arrive, you sort of land on this homepage. Now, one of the things you can do straight away is just go and build content. So um, what you normally do, uh, what I normally do is go to the explore page, because once you get here, you get this uh, lovely sort of new new button here, <laughs> which over the last few months has just added new things to it. So when it first appeared, there was only two things in there. So I was sort of like, why do we have a drop down for two items? Just give us links. But Clearly they're adding stuff to this, which is really, really important. So I'm actually gonna create a workbook directly from the browser. I'm not gonna do this in desktop. And you can see that I get pretty much the uh, experience I'm used to um, on desktop, okay? And I'm actually not gonna connect to this, uh, anything here that's published. I'm gonna connect to a, a flat file on my machine. Now you can of course connect to databases. It's got a pretty decent list. Most of what everyone uses is covered here. There are a few quirks here and there, but broadly speaking, it, it all works fine. So let's go ahead into files and I'll upload from my computer. Now I have a, a folder on my desktop um, titled 2021.2. And so what I'm going to do here 
is I'm just going to grab this uh, Superstore sale. So this is a data set you've seen in Tableau, so you don't have to worry about um, the data set. It's a very familiar data set. I'm just going to bring that in. And once this is in, um, I'm just going to let this load. You'll get this sort of familiar setup on the left-hand side. So I just want to start here with this very simple setup. Obviously, we got the new data model. I'll go in there, create a sheet. I'll drop orders into the view. And uh, always notice that uh, you know, Tableau is changing this constantly. So there's always new things sort of happening, right? So for example, there's this side pane here, which is slightly different from desktop um, so in case you haven't noticed. And um, there's always going to be sort of something new and exciting. So always sort of pay attention to this interface stuff. It's it's kind of really important. So let's go ahead to sheet one. And you can see here on the left-hand side that I've just got my um, fields as normal, okay? Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to another file, which is a shape file. So shape file contains spatial information. So I'm just going to build an area calculation. And the reason I connected to um, the Superstore cells is because I need that a little later on. But let's first bring in the shape file. So I'm going to connect to uh, this file here. When you upload shape files in the browser, you need the whole zip file, not just the shape file itself. So that's why I'm just giving it the zip file. It's 12 meg. And obviously it's gonna upload it to the Amazon uh, cloud, which is what Tableau Online runs off. Um, I'm trying to fill for time as it does that. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, once it's there, it will unpack the zip file. It will figure out the uh, shape file automatically and um, be pretty much ready to go. And um, one thing I have noticed with the browser instance is that it, it's faster at certain tasks, but it's sometimes slightly slower on interface features. So uh, you can see it's successfully connected there. Once it's connected, it just goes straight in. And you can see that I've got my geometry fields here on the left. Now, let me um, change a few things here. You can see I'm just using this like desktop, okay? And this uh, spatial file I connected to is actually um, flood zones in London. So let me just very double, uh, very quickly double click this geometry file and it will go and held and build um, a map showing me all the flood zones in the UK. Um, I obviously get this notifications about uh, animations. Uh, it can't do it with this viz because it's a bit complex. If I go to map and I go to map layers, I can obviously make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, all the things you can do in desktop, it's pretty much all there. You have to now really look hard or really need advanced features for it to not work um, like it's supposed to. And I'll just wash this out a bit so that we can see the colors a bit better. And um, I'm just pressed for time. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and actually um, show you what I'm trying to show you. So let me bring the uh, probability band in. And the last thing I need is the object ID just here because uh, I need that on level of detail to create the area calculation. And so what Tableau has done is they've essentially brought uh, a calculation that allows you to calculate the area. Super, super simple. So let's just go ahead and type area. And that's all you really need to type. It's really that simple. And um, if you ever sort of uh, stuck in Tableau with a formula, you can just open up this uh, little arrow on the right and you can see the area description is just right here. So it wants the geometry and then the specification of whether you want in kilometers or miles. It actually supports quite a few. I'll just use uh, miles for now. Um, so let's just uh, bring the geometry. And if I actually type geometry, you'll see that it comes up. Uh, the geometry is essentially just the polygon or the thing that you want it to calculate the error for. So uh, essentially what was in your shape file. And you just need to give it single speech marks and I'll, I'll do kilometers just to keep this easier and um, match the calculation. I'll call this area, okay, and hit apply and click OK. So now that the error calculation is done, I can bring that onto the tooltip. I won't put it on the label because it will probably uh, render a really bad looking viz. Um, and now when I hover over each of these areas, what I should have in there is an error calculation. So if I hover over this one, you'll see that I have 14.24 kilometers squared. So that is the error calculation doing its thing. Now, what's really cool about this is that it allows us to convert what used to be um, actually, you know, very difficult information, spatial information into another type of data that now we can use a lot more easily. So if I bring in the object ID and I just want to, for example, figure out which is the largest one, well, I don't need to look at the geometry anymore. I can just bring in my area calculation and start to play with this like it's, um, it's a piece of data that we're used to working with. So you can see here that the largest one is this object ID. And of course I can start filtering and do whatever I want to do. So it gives us lots of new ways of working with spatial information. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is that when you, if I go back to the map, 
when it does this area calculation, um, when it's over really large distances, it's going to be less accurate because the way that Tableau is doing the calculation doesn't account for the curvature of the earth. So the larger the, the area is, the less accurate it's going to be, but it's not going to be off by much. It's just, you know, if you try and predict the area of a country that will be off, but it will be off by an amount that doesn't really matter at that scale, if that makes sense. Uh, but if you want something accurate, um, you're going to need some other tool to sort of get that down to the meter squared if you need that level of precision. But if you're measuring parks or a playground, this is going to be perfectly fine. Okay. So that's that's the first viz built. We're going to leave that in there. I've got another <laughs> viz built in there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Superstore very, very quickly. And um, I'm just going to build a very simple uh, chart, um, sales and profit. And then I'm going to break this down by product ID. This is a classic uh, Tableau demo that you always do. And what I'll do for this is I just want to keep this super simple. So I'll put category on color and I'll rotate it. I'm just going to go up here to the toolbar and just rotate it like so. OK, so that's it. I've built three things. Now I'm going to put them in a dashboard so I can show you the next feature, which is to do with layout containers. So. I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to double click each of these and uh, Tableau will automatically place them into the uh, canvas. Now they're not related. They're not from the same data source. So this is going to be a very ugly visualization. Definitely not iron viz worthy, but it's going to show what I need it to show. <laughs> so here we are. We've got a, a dashboard ready built. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to um, bring in um, uh, my, I think I'm going to bring in, no, I don't need to bring anything in actually. So I'm just going to grab this sheet number three here. And um, I'm actually just wait one second. Now I will bring something in. I'll bring a vertical container in. Sorry, um, I'm, I'm being slow here. If I bring a vertical container in, I can then put these two objects inside of that. And um, you know, some of the lag here is because I'm in the browser, but I, I really want to sort of live this life that Tableau is uh, you know pushing so let's let's try and see what it's like you can see it's a bit buggy there so that's fine i'll double click the sheet to give me the container and then i can add a show and hide button so previously what you had to do for this to work is have a floating item okay but now what i can do is i can add it for a fixed item so i don't need the item to be floating anymore i can have tiled items and have this show and hide button. And so if I now go to uh, this uh, preview mode, so if I, um, oh, the workbook has unsaved changes. So let's <laughs> let's definitely save that so we don't have to rebuild this again. I'll put it in my 2021.2 folder and I'll just put um, user group in here. Click save. It's conscious of time. So I need to make sure I move along quickly here. Um, save that. And then what I'll be able to do is uh, show you this button working once it's saved it. Uh, here we go. Perfect. So now if I just go to preview this, um, actually, no, that was the uh, switch to desktop uh, icon. So let's not do that. Uh, give it one second. I don't want to switch to desktop, cancel. And I think I'm just going to have to save this and move this thing out of the way. So save. I'm going to close this. And now it'll get, take me back to my um, explore tab. And in my 2021.2 folder, I'll have a workbook called user group, which is just hiding behind Zoom. So let's open that up. I'm going to pretend to use this like a, an everyday user. And you'll see my show and hide button is just over here. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because um, if I use the shortcut to try and preview it, doesn't work the same as desktop. So I actually have to go to it to, to kind of see it working. So here you are, you can you can see this little X thing here. Now it's obviously not pretty, but obviously if I was to close that, um, what it will do is hide the container there. And now you'll see that that contents disappeared. Now, the smart thing to have done is actually put these two things into the same container. And what would have happened is this would have sort of expanded to fill the space. So because you can now show and hide these things, uh, especially tiled or non-tiled containers, you can actually use space much more efficiently. A good example is you could put filters in a vertical container and then put that vertical container inside of a horizontal container with something else. And when you collapse this filters control panel, um, the whole viz will take um, take up the space. And when you open it up, it will shrink again. Um, a couple of downsides to watch out for. If you do add these, what Tableau has to do is it has to render the visualization every time. So it will have a sort of knock-on impact on performance or make it slightly less zippy. 
but nevertheless it's still a nice thing to have especially if you have them um sort of in in places that don't really sort of matter um, if that makes sense so that's that's just a really nice um, sort of feature okay now um i'm already on tableau online here so i can go ahead back to my explore page and you can see that i've got a bunch of content here from 2021.2 now what tableau did is they also added um, a couple of features actually two big features for viewers and explorers ask data and ex uh, explain data so these are two slightly different things so let's go back to the viz that i just built and on the dashboard you saw that i built that um scatter plot of profit and sales okay and you'll see here that it's just over here on the top right hand side and if i click on this data point you'll see that nothing happens and that's because i haven't actually enabled explain data on this particular data point so if i go back and edit this just give it one second okay and now that i'm here if i go back to um uh, mind blank here just one second so go in here i actually have to go into explain data so if i click on this and wait for it to load up and here we go you'll see that this 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 little um light bulb here it's a very small thing but when we click on it um it'll actually load up explain data and it will come from the right hand side so i don't know if you saw that but um, if you see here on the right hand side, we've now got the new interface for explain data, but I'm still using it as an author. I'm not using it as a viewer or explorer. Um, and so what will actually happen is once I'm here, I have this uh, very tiny setting over down here. And so if I go to that setting, I'm having to look uh, uh, over my mic, which is why I'm doing it like this. Um, this mic's kind of covering the right hand side of the screen. Um, you'll get this sort of interface and this interface uh, gives you an option to enable this for viewers. So what this allows people to do is they can do this sort of inquisition for themselves. They can click on a data point and Tableau will try and pull out the most pertinent insights about that data set um, for them. And it will do that by analyzing these fields. So you can see the list of fields that are available here and you you, you can see they're mostly set to automatic, but let's say as an, as an author, I don't want a certain field to be included in my analysis. Uh, so essentially, Tableau is doing some machine learning in the background. So I can tell Tableau, hey, don't include category in your machine learning analysis, and it won't bother sort of doing that for you. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can uh, look at the explanation type. So when, to ask, uh, when explain data came about, um, this explanation type were very limited, but now it actually covers a really, really good range of, of things, things that can skew your data very easily without you understanding it. So extreme values, number of records, you know, uh, relevant dimensions related to a particular performance or anything like that, it's all there. So let me go ahead and click this tick box here, enable it so that we can actually see it in our viewing experience. I'm obviously an admin, but it will be exactly the same if you're viewing it. Okay. And, um, before I do that, you can see here that it's got profit and some of sales highlighted when I specifically click on this red dot, okay? And uh, that's this mark that's being explained. So now that I've uh, done that, let me close this and let's go ahead to the viewing experience so that we can see what that looks like. Uh, just give this one second. This is, a, this is a common story with uh, in the browser. You do, you do have to wait a little bit, but um, the good thing is if anything sort of happens, all my work's in the cloud and it's it's nicely sort of done, there's sort of upsides and downsides to everything. The nice thing with desktop is it's, you know, nice and fast today, but uh, soon you have to start sharing content while your content's in some of the wrong place. So you can fall into bad habits on desktop very easily. Anyway, here I am, I've saved my workbook. Now, when I go to click on this data point, if I actually click on it again, you'll see that whereas I didn't before, I now have this little explain data icon. So let's go ahead and click on that. And what you'll see is you get this toolbar here. Now, remember earlier on, I talked about the future of Tableau. Now, I know it's a very small thing, um, but I, I kid you not, um, this right-hand side panel is, I think a it's literally a big deal because Tableau have never put anything interface-wise on the right hand side of the screen. So for them to put a single thing in there is a really good hint that there's more coming <laughs> in this little place. Either explain data is going to get better and it's going to do a lot more, uh, or they're going to use this right hand side panel for explaining stuff specifically for viewers and explorers. If you think about it, if this panel is mostly going to be used by viewers and explorers, you can expect sort of the design language to put a lot of the things that we're used to seeing over in this right hand side. The only other time I've seen this sort of um, right hand interface is for metrics when you're setting up subscriptions and metrics 
experience. And so those are, again, things that viewers and explorers would do a lot. So it's really nice to see a desktop um, authoring uh, feature, make it over to viewers. And when it's being used for viewers, it's actually something useful. So I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if this right-hand side starts filling up with new features over time. So I've gone into the profit uh, thing here, and it's basically telling me that this particular mark uh, has, um, well, this higher is, this this mark, this data point is higher than expected. Um, it basically, what it's determined is that this particular data point is an outlier. And actually, um, if you look at the behavior of some of the underlying characteristics, um, it, it, it's actually skewing the data a little bit. So if I was to remove that outlier from the data, obviously the pattern would change. It's a bit of an obvious analysis, right? But you'd be amazed how hard that is actually to comprehend in a visualization. No, data literacy isn't necessarily, you know, uh, the same across everyone who uses a Tableau uh, a dashboard. So it's really nice that Tableau have this helping hand and it goes into the data and looks at things and really just literally explains it to people. And if you want any of these insights, of course, you can just, you know, click on this little icon here and take it into a new view. And obviously Tableau will pop it out into this modal view here. And now the person can sort of see that uh, particular explanation in lots more clarity. Okay, so that's explained data for viewers. I've I've not shown that feature in its fullest form. There's so much more I could show you there, but that's just something sort of to be aware of. This is what viewers are going to be able to do now if you give them permission. If they're going to be able to click on data points and have Tableau help them understand what's going on, which is a nice uh, quality of life improvement, especially for viewers and explorers. Okay, that's explain uh, data and some of the new interface items for that. Um, another thing is uh, another feature called ask data. Now, ask data is sort of uh, going the other way. So explain data allows uh, users who are looking at a dashboard to ask more questions. Ask data allows users to ask new questions from just a data set. So they don't have to have built a dashboard. They can just go ahead and uh, look at a data set. So of course I'm using our trusty Superstore sales. And uh, since three releases ago, when you clicked on a data set, a Tableau automatically opens this ask data interface. And because I'm on 2021.2, you'll notice that I see a couple of new things. So the first thing is the default thing I see is this uh, lens perspective. And the way to think about lenses is that there are a subset of, um, they're basically a perspective and they contain a bunch of fields from your full data set. So if I explain this analogy a bit more, uh, this is Superstore sales. These are all the fields in Superstore sales. Now, let's say I just wanna analyze shipping. Now. Shipping doesn't require all the fields that I have available to me, especially all the profit related ones or, uh, you know, the accounting related fields. So what I can do as an admin or as a, an author is I can create a perspective from this first data set. What this means is that I don't have to create multiple copies of Superstore just for our data to be a friendly experience for people who want to use it. And so if I'm a user and I know I just want to ask questions about shipping, I can simply click on my shipping lens, which I created earlier, and it will narrow this sort of list of fields down. So now you can see I have a lot less, okay? And it's also talking about other areas and other issues that are popping up related to this perspective. So it's it's like a smart way of giving context for a user before they start asking questions, okay? Now, um, you can see in this perspective, um, I have less fields. I only have the items related to uh, shipping. So now that I'm here, I can actually start asking questions. So I'm just going to uh, ask a very simple question. I'm going to type it like you would say. I'm not going to sort of cook this up or anything. We'll see how it handles it. So um, what was the average um, days to ship? Okay. So if we look at this question, uh, I, I asked it as an actual question. So what was, and as notice, as I hover over this, um, there's lots of semantic information popping up. You've got this over here, you've got this over here. And Tableau is essentially trying to pass this question out into a query that it can then use on a data set. So uh, the first thing that it grabbed on is, is the average days to ship. And the reason uh, that has worked there is because there's actually a field called average days to ship that I created in this data set. So you can see here days to ship, but what it's also figured out is that this is an aggregation. So it's going to grab this days to ship feature and it's going to do the aggregation, okay? And it's gonna come up with one number, okay? So let's go hit enter. I could hit enter on my keyboard, let's do that. 
it will think about it, it will go off and it will go and do the question and it will try and answer it. It will give us a sheet and the average data ship is 3.958. So this is really powerful because although granted I asked it in English and you know uh, this thing is only optimized for a certain set of languages, it actually answered the question and it's not a nice viz, okay? I probably have more questions once I'm here, um, but it's really nice to be able to do that, right? And you can start to see really, really powerful uh, ways of breaking this down. What if I then add some context to this? Uh, break uh, this down by category, okay? So what I've asked it to do is break this down. Now I've typed it in English again, but notice that it's continuing the question. So it's a bit like you're having a conversation with your data, hence ask data. So you can see here that it's add this, added this category uh, thing that it's noticed to this. And so now if I hit enter, you would expect it to try and show me the average days to ship for each category. And it's changed that from a number to a bar chart. So now I can start to see more of what's going on. And so you get the idea. I'm not gonna murder, murder this analogy too much, but essentially this is cool. You can ask questions. If you don't like the chart type, you can head, head over here to the right-hand side and you know choose your chart type. Um, uh, there's no pie charts, surprise, surprise, but every other chart type is available to you. So you could choose a heat map. Look, it doesn't get it right all the time. There's obviously places where it could improve, but generally speaking, it does a pretty good job of giving you options. And that's really the most important thing. How many times do people just wanna get at the data in the business and they download the data into Excel to do exactly this? And imagine if you could just tell them, hey, you don't have to do that. You can just type the question straight away. So really nice feature. And this again is available for viewers and explorers. So this is really powerful because um, everyone can do this. This is not just limited uh, as it was before to a specific type of license. Everyone who uses Tableau server or Tableau uh, online gets this feature. So this is going to be a really, really nice quality of life improvement. Now, the other thing is if you are an explorer, you can then go on and build a visualization from this. So you can obviously save this. I'm obviously uh, an author, so I can do this. So I can actually save this, save it as a visualization, put it in somewhere and I can start saving this. And um, in, in the next release, it's gonna be some really exciting things uh, as well added to this whole set of capabilities that will just sort of blow the lid off and um, letting everyone sort of start to answer their own question. So look out for that. I'm under NDA, so I can't say anything, but definitely just sort of look out for some of the nice things that are coming forward. So that's Ask Data sort of in a nutshell. And um, it's, it's, it's again, a really nice quality of life improvement. The lenses are really what make this nice because previously when you had all these fields sort of mudding the water, it was really hard to work with, with, a, with, a, with a data set, but now you can narrow these down and you can really get them sort of um, simplified. Okay. Now the last thing I'm going to cover before um, I stop, I think I've covered everything I wanted to, but one, which is collections. Now collections are really cool. Um, if I go back uh, three releases ago, uh, Tableau added this sort of a uh, square and it was sort of weird because the only thing in this square was the explore button. So again, this is another hint. Like why would you add a whole section to the interface to only put one thing in? Surely you just add it onto the existing list. When you have enough things, you put them into a group. But actually um, the explore tab and now collections are sort of the first two things um, I'm sure of more features that allow you to start to organize content in, in a much more meaningful way for the individual. You see a lot of the stuff that we've had before. So all these features up here, this has been sort of managed by the admins, the site admins, you know, where the governance and stuff comes from. That's all been managed by them. But actually the explore tab and collections is really about you, the individual and how you browse and work with Tableau, okay? So if I go over to my collections, um, the first thing you'll realize is that they're all private. So by default, any collection that's created is a private collection. So that means only you can see this. So it's like a way of bringing content from lots of different places into a personal space that you call your own. And then once you've put things in the collections, and I'll show you how to do that in a, in a quick second, um, you can look at it all in one place. And if you see this collection here that I created um, in June, you can see it's got a bunch of things. If I actually look at it as a list rather than a grid view, you'll see the different types of things more clearly. So the column you wanna pay attention to is this column here, and you can see the different icons uh, for each of the data types there. So you can see, if I just grab my arrow here and I go in blue, just to give it a different color, you can see we've got a workbook, We've got two data sources here. Uh, I've got a connection, which is coming from Tableau Prep. That's why it's got the single cylinder. It's technically a connection, but it's being fed by Tableau Prep. 
um, which itself can be running on a schedule, right? Um, we've got a workflow. This is a little icon for flows on the server. And I've also got a folder. I've got a project in this collection. So it's got no sort of restrictions on what you can put in it. If it's a piece of content that is available on Tableau server, you can mostly put it into a collection. There's one limitation and that is draft prep flows. They can't be put into this, but again, not really a problem unless you're working a lot on Tableau prep in the browser. So how do you add stuff to this collection? Well, it's super easy. Let's just go to the home page. Actually, let me go to my explore page. And what I'll do is I'll just go look at um, this list. Now this list is super handy. It breaks down all the different types of content. So I'm gonna go ahead and go grab one flow. And I'm just gonna tick, you can see I've got two draft flows. So I'll tick this flow here. And if I go to the actions tab over here, you can see that I've got this option here to add to collections. I won't do it that way though, because there's another way you can do these things. If I untick that and go to these three dots over here, uh, the three dots do amazing things. Always click on them and look at the features in them. Okay, you can do the same sort of thing here. So you can either select multiple items and do it as bulk, or you can do it for each item. Let me add this uh, workflow uh, to the collection and you'll see that it shows my two previous collection or if I haven't even created the collection, I can start a new one, okay? I uh, just need to end this very quickly. Um, so let me just add a couple of things to this. So you can see that uh, I've got the new one there. It calls it out as a new one. Uh, click add and you get all these nice alerts up here, nice loud uh, icons to let you know that this is all done, okay? So now that that's all done, you can obviously go to the collection and start adding more and more things. Now, once you've created a collection, the really nice thing is they don't break permissions. They don't break any of your existing permissions that you set up. So what you can start to do, some really cool things. I can go and put everything related to a particular project into a collection regardless of if it crosses or goes across multiple teams, then I can send that one link to that one collection to everyone. And Tableau will only show people the content that's available to them in that collection. So uh, a very sort of literal example, I might send this collection, Tim's collection to an, a team, but finance, for example, can only see these two items and sales can only see these two items, but managers, for example, can see everything. And Tableau will be working on those permissions for you, but you've sent one link, which makes it so much easier to send people one link that stays constant, that doesn't get deleted and moved around. And you can start to sort of segment things in a lot, lot nicer way. So um, I, this is just version one. And there's lots more sort of underneath this that you definitely need to sort of go and check out. Uh, but nevertheless, yeah, this is, this is going to be a really nice thing. And like I said, I am definitely certain that these won't be the only two things here uh, over time. So, um, definitely keep keep a track of what's going on with tableau and yeah hopefully hopefully you see more great things there so i'm, I'm over time i really need to stop now so <laughs> i'll stop there and hopefully look uh, for more questions um from from the audience uh, actually there's probably loads in chat already that i've missed <laughs> we we have two for starters i would think there's Go more because there Go was uh there's just some excellent stuff shared and you could see just how deep the uh, even this latest release really is with new stuff right right um so first of all, thank you for that presentation. Thank you for the time. I know you're actually no on fraternity leave. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you for <laughs> interrupting that to present to our group. Um, no worries, no worries. Let me just start first with this question from Manoj. Uh, first of all, Manoj, oh. good to, to at least hear from you again and see you in the group. Um, so new features are super cool, he says. I hope to see right-hand panel where authorized users can add commentary. It would be very mm -hmm. useful to me. Uh, and that's more of a, a comment here. His question is, any idea if there would be easy integration of displaying Tableau dashboards in Salesforce? Is Tableau moving yeah, in that direction? Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, uh, you know, once the Salesforce acquisition of Tableau, uh, sorry, yeah, Tableau acquisition by Salesforce closed, the first thing that people kept on asking me is why is this still hard, right? And essentially, I think we're only just starting to see the benefit of that integration starting to sort of kick in. Um, in this release, there was a big bunch of Salesforce sort of starting points, essentially. So you can now authenticate with Salesforce much easier. And um, that is sort of a really important part because if you don't get the authentication right when people switch between the two systems they won't be seeing the same and correct thing so um i expect that to be something that becomes super easy in fact i'd be wouldn't be surprised if you can start tableau content from salesforce and vice versa uh, probably next year onwards but you kind of have to get things right you have to get the governance and security correct 
then you have to make it easier for people like creators to build the content in that way. Then finally, you can bring everyone else into that sort of ecosystem. There are a couple of things today that do make it easier. So there's a couple of sort of quick hacks that Tableau and Salesforce chuck together. Um, I'll maybe post a link to that um, later on. So look, look, look at the comments. Um, but yeah, um, there's a couple of ways you can do that now, but it's not, it's not easy. You have to do a bit of work to do that. Uh, yeah, just to add on to that, and this may be a, an idea for a future presentation in the group, we're, we're using right now the Lightning Web Component, Manoj, mm -hmm. with, uh, so we're bringing Tableau dashboards into Salesforce and users' workflow so that they're able to access the tools directly within a Salesforce case. And it's, yeah. we're just rolling it out, but it's proven to be very uh, productive and efficient for our users so they're not having to actually go out to a portal or to a server to get mm -hmm. their dashboards or able to access it directly in the case. So. Um, yeah. there's that, that option. So lightning web component is something to possibly research. Uh, okay. Um, next question. So actually two questions from an anonymous attendee. So we know that we have map layer and obviously the area calculation is awesome. Lots of features there, but working for an organization, I feel we're limited to the data and displaying the data. You cannot create fancy visualizations considering the theme and the product requirements. This is a case with me and a few of my friends. So I asked here. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if I'm reading this correctly, but I think what I'm hearing is, look, um, you want to be more creative with Tableau. I think I think that's basically what this this is saying. And you're sort of limited because Tableau is fairly focused on this analytical capabilities and the data itself doesn't lend itself to creating sort of these fancy visualizations out of the box. Um, that is a hard one. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's the question. So I'll sort of work with that. Let me know in some way if it's not. Um, yeah, sometimes the data does, does, just doesn't fit what you had in mind. Like so many times I've seen something cool uh, in the Tableau community and I've gone to grab a data set that I think would work. And then I do the viz and the viz works, but the data doesn't fit. And something that Tableau is working towards is finding a way to show you what something might look like very quickly and easily as you work with it. Because when you write a calculation, once you've written the calculation, you can't preview the output of that calculation very easily. You have to then go grab it, put it in the viz, format it, space it out, put it in the dashboard, and then finally you can see what it looks like. So um, there's definitely a lot more work for them to do there. Um, in other terms, I think the best thing to do is the best way to sort of get more creative is just to do more and more stuff. So um, um, Christian called out some of the challenges. I know it sounds maybe repetitive because everyone says so, but um, really, really, even if you don't do them, just engage, just tune in weekly, see what people are building, because you'd be amazed how people sort of creatively solve problems with Tableau and how they go around Tableau sort of limitations to do stuff. So definitely look at those two. And, you know, it will take time. It's not something that you could solve overnight, but the more you look around, the more you start to get inspired and hopefully the more easier it is to, to think of these things and start building them practically. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Tim. There's a second part to that question that I'll, I think yeah. just in, in the interest of time, I'll ask you to answer, uh, type in the answer as we're going to the next presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. From the so yep. I was going to say our data, our data can do date comparison. So you could say, uh, show me the performance between uh, this period and this period, and it will come up with what it thinks is that period and show you the answer. I challenge you to just try it essentially. Uh, just, just try it. Or if not, again, reach out with some, an example question and uh, I don't know, I'll try and do something and put, share a link with you so you can see a quick screen demo of it doing that, but really challenge it because it, it can do most of the basic questions, but Obviously, you can't push it too far. Yeah. Okay. And one last quest, uh, question in the chat, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you, Kathy. And if you can, we it. can just type type yeah. an answer. To I'll type an answer to that. The, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Andrew's that, question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you again for the presentation, Tim and Kathy. So Kathy's a Roche colleague, digital uh, digital products group, digital communications. Did I get that right, Kathy? What? Strategy. Strategy. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah, she's done some uh, work integrating Google Sites uh, with Tableau, and she's also done a lot of work with R, um, R Shiny. She's going to walk us through some of those things she's done to produce uh, portal uh, visualizations. And I believe there's a second component to the presentation where you're using some special characters for filtering and searching that you may also hit on as well. Yes. So I'll go ahead and let uh, Kathy introduce, add anything else to the introduction and uh, yeah, take it away, Kathy. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Christian. 
Um, yeah, I'm Kathy and I work with Roche Tissue Diagnostics and um, I'm in the manufacturing side and we build instruments and reagents um, that are sold globally to hospitals um, that detect um, all sorts of different types of cancers. So in doing that, um, Roche started a digital analytics team in April 2020 so that they could um, look at more troubleshooting their issues and um, have leadership make strategic decisions on the data that we're capturing in our systems and business uh, processes. So we have developed um, a fair amount of dashboards over the past year and a half. And I just wanted to show you how we're sharing them within our organization. Uh, Roche um, uses Google tools. And so with Google, we have Google Mail, Google Chat, Google um, G Drive, and then we have G Sites. And uh, with a Google account, the G Sites is free. So we decided to use that as a web page, like a website for everybody to, um, all our users to come to and access the dashboards anytime, anywhere on any device. So I'm just gonna show you our content and format and then a little bit in the design of, of what we put together as far as a top layer over top of our Tableau server. So I'll share my screen. Hopefully I don't lose anything. So can you see my screen? Yep, yep, you're good. Okay, cool. So this is our homepage. We called it RTD Data Hub. And um, you know, this is where people will come with the link. And this is our homepage. We have some buttons here to meet our team. You can request a new dashboard and then uh, to log into the Tableau uh, to get some of those advanced uh, features that are on the taskbar when you're logged into the Tableau. But this is basically all our di different departments. And then we have some success stories where we have some of our dashboards. Our team last year won the Tom Grogan Award, and this is our winning video. And so we just have a few things and then some, some links down here. So, I mean, just basically you can go into um, the instruments and you can see our platforms. Again, this is kind of across a standard across all of our different pages so that you can always meet our team and request a dashboard. This is a page link. So, um, so basically this is the instrument platforms is a section and then these are common um, dashboards that all of the instruments need to access. So you can go into ultra, which is one of our staining instruments. And you can see we have our daily visual here and then um, production overview. And then we have down into the instrument level dashboards. And you can see we have a little bit of color, but I wanted to point out that um, analytics teams within Roche have recommended that uh, professionally it looks best to just have black and black, black icons and black text, but we just, you know, happen to add a little bit of color here and there where we had it. So that would be our, our instrument side. This is our reagents. And again, you can see daily visuals always at the top. So the things that are easy accessible and then more specific things sections below. Uh, we have quality, and this is uh, our quality control with suppliers and, you know, the different environmental monitoring that they're doing. So there's all our, these are all links to individual dashboards. And one thing's nice is when you do click one, it opens up a new tab and you can click another one and open up a new tab. So you never really lose this RTD tab. It always stays here. Um, see, our change orders is where we have our documentation management and that uh, we use agile and again uh, this group happens to be a little diva group so we kind of put in a fun icon for them um, and then we have development is another area where we we starting to do more and more dashboards this all dashboards is great when you create a dashboard on any of these other pages it automatically goes on to all dashboards you don't have to maintain this page at all so that's really nice we have dashboards that are validated for fda and then another page that we put together is a Tableau how-to videos. Uh, we use Snagit uh, recording feature. And let's see if it'll come up. Okay. Just refreshing here. But we found that our users really didn't know that much about, you know, a lot of things that are on the Tableau dashboard, such as the collapse and expanding of the date access and also how to filter on the color legend and, the, and, and on values, filter values. You can click on that value and then that value will highlight throughout the whole dashboard. So we just put together like one minute uh, videos to help our users. And again, the advanced skills, making sure they know how to log into the Tableau server to, to access 
being able to create views and share views and actually add comments and be able to add comments with email. So this is uh, something uh, that we thought was really helpful for our users to learn to be a little bit more self-sufficient uh, with, their, with their dashboards. Uh, the digital transformation and guidance are all um, basically guidance uh, documents. And then we have an about us, which is our team. So we have a pretty small team, just the three of us um, right now. And we just, again, our uh, Grogan Award and some dashboards. And then we put in some testimonials. So we found that that was helpful. A lot of people saying nice things about uh, the impacts that our dashboards are having with their organization. So that is basically uh, what it looks like, our, um, how we share our dashboards with our users. But I want to show you a little bit of design. So if you go into Google Drive, you can left click here and do more and you'll see Google Sites is here. You just click on the Google site and then you'll have a whole new web page that you can edit. So this is what it looks like in editing mode. So this is kind of editing mode. Um, this is our home page. One thing that's nice is you have a change image. You can select an image and they have all these images here. And so we just kind of stuck to a theme down here below. We just kind of used all of these for all of our pages, but you can change them at any time and you know, have fun with them. And you can also add your own um, images if you like. So on this page, again, some buttons, everything's over here, the different types that you need. So we have buttons, we have uh, sections, and then this is our, um, our dashboards. And so if I were to go into instruments, let's see, I'll go into reagents. This seemed to be running a little bit slow. Instruments. So again, this here, you can see that the link you can edit this link and the link goes to a page and you can give it whatever name you want. And then again, up here is where you would, you can put in the link to the page, but you can also put in the image. You can upload an image or select an image for that um, particular icon. So down here, if I wanted to, I could just take this, do control C and then control V and then just bring it up and maybe center things over a little bit. And then again, just go in here and say, okay, I have a different uh, link and just put in your link and whatever name you wanna put in. So you can just do that. Oh, did I not hit something right? Let's see here. There's a little thing I'm doing right now. I guess you have to hit apply. Okay, and then you can just go in and change the uh, the image to whatever else you want to change the image to and the link to a different link. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete that so it's not there and then move these guys back a little bit. So that's basically how easy it is to edit the, uh, the, the web page. And over here you have a publishing button that you can you know review the, the changes and then cancel them out if you don't wanna use them. So I think that's really what I wanted to show you as far as the platform that we're using to share our dashboards. And again, it's anytime, anywhere access for our internal website. So with that, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was a, a feature that we implemented. It's, um, we used a symbol and we concatenated it to a, to a text field. And that allowed us to provide you know, another light, let, uh, another level of information on our dashboard with very little uh, real estate. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, see if I can get that out here. Go ahead and show you that. This is our dashboard here. Um, most companies have a strategic plan. And so we were asked to uh, show the projects that we're working on or have worked on and how they relate to our strategic plan. So this is all of the projects that we've worked on over those years. This is SPO Group, which is what I'm part of, which is a system program office. And so these are all the projects that they've worked on. And um, what we wanted to show was the color of what strategy they go against. You can see our strategy plan has different five years. Uh, this is basically a five-year plan. And we started out with kind of paper, 
and then we went in digital silos and then we're in the connected plant right now. And by connected plant, we're looking at like auto close NCRs. NCRs are non-compliance issues. So if it auto, if it closes in one system, we want it to automatically close in all the other systems. So it's kind of an integration of the systems. But in any case, that's just basically our strategic plan over the five years to get to an adaptive plant. These are the projects that we're working on. And as you see, you see these little symbols, they say that this project impacted the SPO team or this project impacted the leadership team. So basically this is the department that was impacted from the project. And this is the uh, department that actually did the work. So I just kind of want to show you how you're able to get the strategy with color, who impacted, you know, what, pro what project was done. And in this particular example, everything is black. So it shows you that the status has been implemented. And so to show you how this was, um, how, we, how we did this in our workbook, I'll go there. But first of all, just show you this um, logon icon website is where we got all of our symbols from. And we just you know, copied and pasted them. That's all we did. But we found that this was a really helpful site to have a lot of different um, symbols that we were looking for. So I'll go to our workbook. And again, I'll just kind of play around a little bit with the workbook so you can kind of see how it works. Um, in the workbook, I put this apply on the multi-selection um, filters. And I find that very helpful because then it doesn't keep requerying. So let's say I just want to see 2020 and maybe I want to see what quality is doing. So I hit apply and apply. So now we can see. So our quality control has been working on these uh, projects. You can see they're all red and that indicates that they are in progress. Um, you can see that a fair amount of them are data as an asset for strategy. Some are accelerant process automation, and then we have one that's a predictable. So they're the projects that they're working on. And you can see that quality control is really impacting reagents and instruments with their projects. I'm going to put it back. So I can go to the sheet. Everything is related. So you, I want to show everything on the sheet. So again, now you can see everything. Um, and again, this will tell you that this project is going against quality. This is reagents, this was logistics. And you can see what uh, level in the plan that the projects are related to. So if I go over to my sheet, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, <laughs> you might be curious of, is this background is actually a slide from a PowerPoint presentation and that was the plan. And so I, we took it into uh, paint and we just kind of subdued the, the coloring and made it you know, less bright. And, um, and then we just brought it in as an image on our dashboard. So we just used this image feature, brought it in, and then we took the sheet and we overlaid the sheet on top of it. And so we just kind of fixed the size so that all of the um, levels will, will go into their right columns. So here's our sheet. And so, you know, how we did this was really pretty simple was we started with a calculated field for our shape. And you can see, so the department impacted, if it's SPO, use the, the music sign. If it's reagents, use the teardrop, you know, whatever was impacted, use the particular um, symbols. And again, we just took the symbols from that site, copied it and just pasted it in here in text. So that's how we got our symbols. From there, we went and did a filter. And so we have this guy that we put together. This is gonna be our filtering. We said, okay, attach the de department shape plus the department impacted. And that's how we strung that together. And then that became a filter up here. So you have to edit the filter, you'll see them all here. So there's your symbols and the department that's impacted. And then that is where this comes from. So we just did show, show filters. You can see show filter there. And then that will show up here. And you can see that there is a symbol with the impacted department. But also what you can see is there's a symbol that goes against the project name. And so it's like, so we're using it in a dual fold. Um, so what we did there was I created a uh, implemented uh, calculated field for if the status is implemented, 
then what is it is actually the project name. That's, that's what uh, the field is. So it'll give me the project name for everything that's been implemented. And then the same thing with in progress. So if it's not, it's not implemented, that means it's in progress or planned or you know, whatever, it's not implemented, then it's gonna be, what is the project name? So basically those. And then what we did was we took the department shapes and we put it on text and we put the implemented on text and the in progress on text. And then if you look at the label, we went to the labeling and here we have the department shape and then implement it, we put in black and in progress, we put in red. And so that's how we get the status of coloring. So again, if I go back here, it's really nice to see all of our projects. Um, you can drill down to whatever department you wanna see is working on particular projects. And you can see what um, department that that project is impact, impacting, what the strategy is with the coloring, and then with the, the coloring of the text to determine the status of the project, if it's implemented or um, is in progress. So that's pretty much my spiel. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was pretty easy to put together. And again, it really saves a lot of real estate on, the, on your dashboard. Yeah, I like it. Each title is like a multi-dimensional information uh, resource. Very cool. Yeah, and it was neat to overlay it over top of the um, yeah, yep. plan. So. Yeah, I like it. Cool. Question for you, Kathy. One in the Q&A from Nanad. And he, it's about authentication, security. Uh, asking you if you can talk about user authentication done to share the dashboards over Google Sites. Is the default mode set to share with everyone with the link, or do you have to provide access to set groups? I believe that IT handles that and it's all like, this is our own Google account with Roche. So you wouldn't be able to get in with our RTD hub um, data link. You have to log in. Did I answer uh, your question or not? Just, I guess, follow up in the chat if you'd like clarification there. Um, one thing I was curious about is with the Google sites, are you able to I guess you have the views on the Tableau server, but tracking the engagement and where your users are interacting with the Google site, like some way to be able to understand clicks or engagement would be really cool if you're able to do that with Google Analytics or some combination of Tableau server or surveys or whatever. No, you're right. There is, I don't have it um, up right now, but there is Google Analytics and you can see how many views and clicks are done on each of the pages. So we can't see what was clicked on the page, but we can see how many people went to that page. Gotcha, cool. And one thing I forgot to mention, now that you brought that up, um, oh, shucks, what was it? It was about the Google, oh, darn, I was just thinking about it. Uh, oh, so this is a really cool thing. You saw all the links that I had going to the Tableau uh, dashboards. So all of our dashboards are out on Tableau server, but if you move any, like say you create more folders and subfolders on the Tableau server and you move the dashboards, you do not have to update the links. The links are generic enough. They're basically going to the name of the, of the workbook or the dashboard. And so you don't have to update anything on the, um, the Google site, which yep. is really cool because we just went through a new uh, organization and we added a bunch of folders and we thought it was gonna be a lot of work, but we just used the move um, feature on Tableau server, which is um, a feature that's under the ellipsis. And uh, we just moved everything and didn't have to touch the RTD hub, which was great. <laughs> yeah, very cool. And I imagine any custom views that users create on that particular dashboard that they've created for themselves would remain intact. So if they click through the Google site to get to that dashboard, if they have a custom view that's their default, they would open that for them yeah. based, off of, based off of the, the backend authentication that Tableau server is doing. Right, because it doesn't seem to save the path per se in that link. That link is really just opening up the name of the, the dashboard. Cool. So however you have it coming up, if you have it coming up as a, as a creative view default, then it'll come up that way. Cool, yeah. Any other questions for Kathy? Yeah, I think it's cool. I think the integration, I think it makes a lot of sense to use it as a portal. And the how-to videos are a great idea. It saves you guys from getting emails or 
chat messages for the same question over and over again. And yes. it's easy, right? I mean, it's a no, no code or low code solution to be able to put that together. So very cool. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, so let me share my screen. Uh, we're going to do this very quickly. We're going to give away uh, not swag itself, but gift certificates to, to the Tableau gift store. So all that's required of you is you uh, are still around in the meeting and that you provide me with your email address if the spinner lands on your name. So we're going to do two of them. So drum roll. All right, thanks. <laughs> Here we go. Morning, morning. Gosh, don't look at that too closely. You'll get. Um, oh, so close. Ooh. Joni. Okay, let's see if <laughs> let's see if Joni is still around. I mean, if, if not, spin again. If not, we're spinning again. Joni going once, going twice, spinning again. All right, spinning again. Hopefully this doesn't take like 10 minutes. Hopefully this time we get <laughs> Cullen. Cullen, calling Cullen. Nobody wants to claim the free Tableau <laughs> gift card. Kathy, Tim, do you guys want them? Just kidding. Spin. <laughs> ah, Fred will. Well, we're going to try and spin. We're going to try and spin again. All right. Ready. Cody. Cody. Mm. Come on, Cody. Let me look at the participants. Let me see if I can find Cody. I can't see 10 of these. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a good idea, guys. Um, I like okay. Kahoot better. <laughs> I like What's that? that? That's a good idea. I like Kahoot better. <laughs> I know. I didn't have time for a Kahoot. I was, I've been to meetings since 6 a.m. this morning. So <laughs> I'm going to spin one more time. One more time. Maybe just one. One person will double it up. We'll give away a $50 gift certificate instead oh. of 225 <laughs> So $50. Michael, are you here? If you're here, just enter something in the, uh, the chat. Three, nice. two, one. Gosh. We could ask a question and then the first person to respond. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. That's, uh, that's a great, that's a great we, idea. Then we know who's been listening. <laughs> Colin again. Sarah, Sarah Bartlett's enjoying our, our, sort of spinning here. <laughs> Tim, uh, maybe a question based off of the new features, if you can. Uh, oh, gosh. And just OK. Here. Now the pressure's on me. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Right, question. Um, oh, no. OK. Um, OK, uh, I'll ask you a nice question. So which license type got a bunch of new features that they didn't have? in 2021.1. Oh. Tim, you're the judge here. We got some quick I, responses the there. <laughs> no no oh, one's wow. given the right answer so far. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give away this gift card. It's horrible. Clear, clear. It's a combination of some of what you guys have typed already. <laughs> It wasn't just one. There we go. Kathy got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I have your email, Kathy. It was a trick question. It was a bit of a meany one, but it was I viewer and explorer. Viewer people. and explorer. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, That's why I thought it was a good question. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Kathy. We'll we'll do better next time with the spinning or the Kahoot, the, the swag giveaway. But thank you all for attending. Thanks again, Tim, Kathy. And August Tug is on the books for the 19th. So hope to see you guys all there. It'll be with uh, Raleigh, Durham, and Atlanta. And have a great day. Yeah. See ya. Good stuff. Yeah. See you easy, guys. Great job. <laughs>